Hey, what's up, fellas? What we're looking at here is the Thunderbolt propane burner. This is a liquid propane burner that is running off a single 30 pound propane bottle. And it has a vaporizer box on it, similar to the vaporizer coil on a hot air balloon blower, or a hot air balloon burner, I should say. And we clocked in at right around one megawatt with this thing. I'm just doing some high flow testing here to see what this thing can do, and the performance is phenomenal. I do want to make some changes to it, and that's just what we're observing here is to determine exactly what those changes are going to be. So, let's go for a little walk here. One of the first changes that I noticed that I want to be making is the propane line connectors, the stainless steel lines. They need to have a loop in them. See there how it's just a straight pipe? Look how cold that bad boy's getting. So those straight pipes right there need to have a loop in them so that they can be easily attached and I don't have to worry about expansion and contraction and cracking nothing or causing something to leak. And I think putting a loop in each one of those pipes would make assembly a lot easier too because they fit very tight. Look at the frost developing on our vaporizer box, guys. That is a great sign. We're not overdoing it too much and we're not really necessarily underdoing it either. That's kind of what I was worried about. I guessed, you know, just took a, a swing at it of how big I thought that vaporizer box would need to be. And that's kind of based off some prior testing that I've done. And for the most part, this thing does pretty good. It's very cold outside right now. It's about 29 to 30 degrees or something probably. So this propane bottle is only sitting at about 70 PSI's. And look at the fireball we're getting out of a 70 PSI propane tank. You'd be lucky to run one of these burners, guys, off just the gas from the bottle. But because we have inverted the bottle, and we are pumping or pushing liquid fuel. Look at that blue flame. I wish the camera would show you what I really see. We'll have to get a daylight shot of this thing tomorrow. The flame is not that yellow. The camera is not picking up the true colors. It's got a beautiful blue flame to it. There's a little bit of yellow feather at the end, but for the most part, that's all blue, guys. And it is awesome. It's got base to it. You can feel it kicking you in the chest. It's kind of strange it's uh you can definitely tell it's one megawatt of power that's for sure it's uh got a, a very strange hum to it and i think uh let's see here bye bye i can't remember how many horsepower one megawatt is but it's like 1300 or something like that Yeah, like 1,342 horsepower is what we're looking at if you were to rate it at that. So see, there's our 70 PSI, and it's stabilized. That pressure will stay that way until that bottle is empty. So unlike the condition you get with a regular propane bottle setup, as and you lose power as soon as that bottle starts to drop in temperature, we would have been frozen a long time ago if we were using the conventional setup. Oh, we got a leak right there. That's kind of one of the reasons I want to get that loop. I wasn't able to tighten that fitting tight enough because my freaking pipe was like a sixteenth of an inch too small. So I backed that one out just a tad to get it to fit. So that is why I want to get that loop in there, guys. That's going to let me avoid what we just seen right there. So I will be taking those pipes off of there and correcting them. That's kind of what this type of testing does. You know, it just shows you what works and what don't. The straight line pipe I knew was going to be a son of a gun for the simple fact that they're flare fitting so the tube has to be longer than the space it can fit between for insertion so i don't know why i didn't think of the coil thing look at that blue flame that is just awesome or i guess i meant to say the single loop in the pipe that way it can flex you know what i mean you'll see in tomorrow's test we're going to be doing some uh, different testing i'm going to push these six barrels up into the burner another five millimeters so that they're flush. We're getting too much back burn there at lower settings and I don't like that. So, one of the good things I like so far is that that back plate is not glowing red hot. That means we're not just cooking metal away. This thing's gonna have to run for 24 hours at a time 
and she ain't red hot at all. That is beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Now, had that thing been glowing red hot like the, that brick is, I'd be a lot more worried because that would mean the lifespan would be cut down, you know, depending on how red it gets. If you're yellow hot, you get about 400 hours out of 16 gauge stainless and 800 hours out of 1 8 inch. If you're red hot, it'll run forever. It'll just keep going and going almost. It almost, I don't have a time on red hot, but yellow hot, you will eventually burn a pinhole. Man, look at the power of this freaking thing. It's almost completely stiff. It's barely lifting up into the air at all. So I couldn't be more pleased with this for a first test. I mean, it may have been a foul ball a little bit there with the uh, the leak, but man, is this thing awesome. All we gotta do is put some coil pipe on there with one loop in it, I mean, and uh, we won't have to worry about that leak. This thing lights up like a shotgun. It's kind of like uh, firing off a big potato cannon or something. It's got a little bit of a pop to it. Definitely extremely cool piece of hardware right here. I uh, can't wait to see it in the daylight. I've been so busy filling orders, I can't get to this thing until the afternoon. I'm on the clock, I gotta get everything shipped that day. I do shipping in one business day, so I really string myself pretty thin. It's common to pull a 24 hour day around here. And uh, today, for example, it's 721 in the evening and I'm still working editing video so I hope this makes somebody happy here I know uh, I'm pretty pleased with the machine now all I got to do is sell it <laughs> it definitely was a lot of work I think we're looking at about 16 hours of work guys I'll have to double check I stopped and started a couple of times so it's kind of hard to tell the exact but I did clock in the last eight hours on the last day there was a lot of parts and pieces to this thing. I decided to go with the vaporizer box instead of the vaporizer coil because with it being a square shape and all, and I also felt the vaporizer coil had a problem with it. And that is, there is oil and mercaptan and all kinds of other crap in this propane. Some of you guys have seen my propane video where I show the liquid oily crap that you can get out of propane sometimes. Sometimes you'll get like a, a cup of oil out of a 20 pound tank of propane, like an insane amount of oil. And some of the mechanics who service propane engines left some comments on that video and I'm very thankful for them for that. And they spoke about this substance and described how it would cause frustration by clogging up the vaporizer on the carburetor of the propane engines. The propane engines run the same way. They allow a siphon rod to in inject liquid propane into the carburetor, at which point it is vaporized using the heat of the engine block. And residual buildup can contaminate that vaporizer chamber and reduce the vaporization rate, and cause all kinds of problems. So I felt like not having a coil would leave us less prone to clogs. This is an industrial burner that needs to run for, you know, 24 hours and a shutdown could possibly cause a lot of uh, problems with the, the brick making process. I don't know how critical it is to start and stop, but we certainly don't want this thing clogging up on us. So the box should give us plenty of wiggle room for any encounters of that nature. 